Yeah, it's sort of around continuous delivery in Kubernetes and yourself. So at Worker, a um, couple of things. So we've been, like, how long have we been using Kubernetes now? Like a couple of months? Um, yeah, a couple of months in production. A couple of months in production. Um, building like various microservices on top of it. Um, obviously using Worker to deploy to that. Uh, and we recently launched uh, a product called Workflows at Core West Fest in Berlin a couple of weeks ago. Um, so we just want to share some, some best practices and things that we've been uh, encountering uh, while building and deploying uh, services to, uh, to Kubernetes. Some of the things that we've been running into is you know, how do you build these containers, right? We have different services uh, that power the worker platform. Uh, we've got front ends, we've got like maybe an off API, uh, we've got some various back end services. Um, and how do we create them? Well, we create them via pipelines, and ideally not just like a build pipeline, but also like multiple pipelines that might test your code, uh, might push things to a registry, might deploy them to Kubernetes, of course. So we have sort of uh, different pipelines uh, orchestrating different things for us uh, in general. Um, one of the things that we've been running into is that um, services depend on other services, which is kind of uh, uh, troublesome. That means we need to be able to test these uh, uh, services and sort of enforce all the API contracts that we've uh, specified. So we might be um, building this uh, front end thing, which is dependent on the off API and the back end worker. But every time uh, my buddy, my team member makes a, a change to his code, things might break, right? So we need to enforce all the API contracts and make sure everything keeps, keeps on working. Um, so what, that's one of the things that we've been uh, uh, running into and now support with workflows. Um, the other thing is that we have different different environments. So we have a staging environment, we've got a production environment, we might have some white label testing environments, um, and we'd like to push different things, deploy different things to different uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, environments. This is about um, our, uh, specifically our front end guys. They might have a different container that they use on their local machine that we obviously uh, from, uh, that we deploy into production, like have some debug uh, uh, libraries in there, some test dependencies, things that make local development easier, but the things that you don't want to end up in production. So we want to create containers for different, different purposes along the way. And this is what I just talked about. Uh, so we got demos. So this is a sort of sample app um, that does uh, to do a uh, uh, thing. So, so the dev clause here, so this is the worker YAML file which specifies all the different pipelines that you might need uh, along the way. Uh, our dev clause um, is something that you can run locally, so it makes life easier uh, while developing on a laptop, it spins everything up in a container. If you're using services or MongoDBs or databases, uh, those will get spun up as separate containers as well. Um, but this is sort of the more interesting part. Uh, so yeah, initial build, we'll set up our initial uh, build container, uh, you know, install specific packages, it sets our node environment and installs our dependencies on top of this node, uh, node for slim uh, container. So this is uh, sort of our base image. Um, then we have a separate pipeline that runs our unit tests uh, and it installs some uh, test uh, specific dependencies. Um, after which it first of all creates a uh, production ready container, so rebuilds our dependencies, um, moves some output around, and then we have a separate pipeline that is run from the test uh, pipeline that pushes our debug container, so that thing has all the test dependencies and the dev dependencies installed, so it makes life easier uh, on the laptop. Um, in this case, we push it to Quay, so you know, we have environment variables for our passwords and all that stuff. Nice thing is that it tags it with the, the Git branch uh, for easy traceback. And after the release build uh, phase, you saw above, uh, we create a release production ready container that we're ready to deploy to, uh, to Kubernetes. Uh, it leverages uh, an Nginx container because it's just some static files. So we uh, you know, leverage that, uh, clean up some of the build results, move some things around, and then push it to Quay as well. And then in terms of Kubernetes, what we have, uh, a pipeline <coughs> that initializes our cluster. 
Uh, we only need to run this once. Actually, I'm not going to run it because the cluster is already alive. Um, but it does all the necessary things to, to get that up and running. And then finally, we have this cube deploy pipeline um, that touches, creates a bunch of files, in this case certificates, because we're using certificates for authentication. And then finally, uh, runs the kubectl command uh, to uh, launch our service. All right, so this will probably take a long time with everything being down, but just to give you the impression of what's going on, I'm going to change the readme. <coughs> So this is actually the visual representation of the different pipelines that I've shown. So it does the initial build phase first, then it runs our unit tests, uh, and then it fans out into creating like a production-ready container and this development and debugging uh, container that we both push to uh, uh, a Quay. Um, you could, if you'd like, auto-deploy to Kubernetes. Um, and the way to manage these workflows is via uh, sort of the workflows editor. Um, so you can add another uh, a pipeline to this uh, to this workflow. So it could be like kube deploy, um, but you know you might not want to auto deploy to, to production in this uh, particular case. So that could be a manual uh, manual action. And obviously these these pipelines reflect the pipelines that you have in your uh, work YAML. Uh, this thing is taking too long uh, because probably trouble with our friends at the Docker Hub. Um, that's it. Time for a quiz. <laughs> uh, any questions, by the way, on this stuff? Yeah. Is this like the this whole visualization is just coming from that file you were edited? That is a good question. Uh, unfortunately, not, because the file might change on every push. Um, if you know, see what I mean. Mm -hmm. So you you might you know create a different pipeline. And then we need to sort of auto detect, but you do want specific actions to be performed after that, right? So there's a, you need to actually hook up the thing that's in your code with uh, the pipelines that you want to have performed. Um, and usually these things don't change that often. Like right? you set up sort of the workflow that you want, and then you know you feel confident about that. Mm -hmm. You might change like a, a different deploy thing, but uh, not really. So you do have to explicitly hook them up via. Um, this workflow editor specify you know which uh, which pipeline on the worker side needs to uh, correspond with the, the YAML section. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually you just you can see that over here. Uh, I've got some ECS specific things in there as well, but right. you have to like map them uh, at one point in time. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, go ahead. Is this a pure hosted service, or can I run this? No, this is indeed a, uh, a hosted service. Um, we'll be launching our commercial products in the coming months, uh, meaning that you can like have a dedicated resource called VPP Virtual Private Pipelines. You can run, uh, you, you have a specific node that runs your jobs only for your organization. And then the other thing that you, you can download is, the, like I said, the command line interface. Um, so that's over here. Um, and the, the nice thing of the command line interface, like it's the exact same thing that we're running in production. And it's open source. And it is open source, so you can tinker with it, uh, do some pull requests, file some issues, make it better. Yes? Uh, if I want to uh, go to production, I need to give you my production credentials. Yes. How do you keep them secure? Uh, they are secure on our platform. <laughs> So they don't show up in the logs. And yeah, we, we don't we don't print them, um, and then they yeah they're they're encrypted. So. Yeah, so on the on the platform you can. So if anyone actually log of production, answers are available. So they stop the decrypt them. So yeah, they're they're all salted and and, and encrypted on inside the database. Uh, but yeah, so you can just flag them as uh, protected and they get encrypted. <coughs>